All right, greetings everybody. How you doing today? So we have ourselves something a little different. Um, I had a little southern twang, just not different. Uh, this is a an electric heater, and it let's see, it has has like a has a temperature on and off, power on and off. It uh, looks like this is some kind of, uh, I guess, like degree of warmth. Uh, this has a light in it also. So there's there are two 40 watt bulbs in this. And um, it's not giving off any heat. It has a blower that's functional, but there's no heat coming out of it. So we need to see what happens. Here, uh, let's take a look at the back of this thing here. Um, all right, so what's nice about this is uh, it has a little like schematic right here, a uh, circuit diagram that is, and uh, I'm hoping that we can follow this and get an idea like what's going on. Um, that is the model number. Model number is ET EST-5347-10. And uh Yeah, so that's it. That's all we need to know for now. Serial number is a 1523ADD14540. So these units are pretty 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 common because of the 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 uh, they look like you have a little heater going in the house, like an actual, um, when you turn it on, it looks as if right here in the front, it's like burning charcoal. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what we can do. Um, my initial hunch is that the uh, heater coil has actually failed, so we'll open up and take a look. So this is all uncharted territory, so if you have any uh, ideas how to do things better, please go ahead and comment below, which I'm sure some of you will, but be cordial with it. All right, uh, I'm gonna rip into this. I don't really know what's the right order, what to look for. It's electrical, it's not a gas motor. So let's just go ahead and take these screws off. Um, it looks like we have um, 13 Phillips spec here. I'm using my uh, my P my P3 uh, Phillips P3. Phillips. So I haven't seen the uh, Captain Marvel yet movie. I was looking forward to checking it out, but I didn't get around to it yet. Looks pretty good. Did you see it? Yeah, I bet you did. If you're the right vintage, you probably have read a lot of comic books too, maybe, or at least interested in them. All right, so that is the back of that. Um, hmm. All right, those are two bul bulbs right there. Um, this probably creates that flickering effect with the lights. Uh, yeah, that's about right. Okay, uh, I'll let you take a look. So right here we have all the uh, these little lights come off of the bulb, or bulbs, plural, uh, right here. 
and uh, these are both 40 watt bulbs. They reflect off of these fins, these reflective little fins, into this like, cutout shape of uh, a fire. And that's what gives the effect. I think before we proceed, we need to go ahead and test this for sure. And uh, let's go plug it in and see what happens. So I plugged it in. Let's see what happens. That's cool. Yeah, the bulbs are definitely out in the back. I wish I had one of those gauges we can just point at so you can see the temperature. Okay. I'm feeling some warmth. It is blowing out warm air. Well, I'm really glad we didn't proceed anymore because that's functional. You know? I mean, that's hot air blowing over that filament right there. Um, hmm. Don't know what to say. All right, cool. I need to get this base off so you can get access to this. So you get this base off to get access to this. And to do that, I have, uh, so in other words, this top piece right here can come off from this bottom piece. So I'll have to take the legs off and take this top part off. And I noticed that right here, oops, sorry. Um, I didn't see it. <laughs> right here, there's a screw. There's another one down there. And there's one back there. Over here, there's another. And there's up here. And they look like this. You see that right there? So to get to those, I'll have to take the legs off. And then I should be able to separate the top from the bottom. So one of the reasons why I'm continuing on this path, um, the it, even though it generates heat, it doesn't feel as hot as it should, and uh, I'm going to see uh, if that heat and filament in the front is something that uh, is failing or not, or it should be replaced. So these screws are a little longer than the um, the others that I pulled off before, and uh, that these hold on the legs. The ones that I ha that I pulled off earlier are shorter, like that. And that's the screw I'm trying to get at.
get these screws off. That, that, and that. This and that. So, you know, six screws all together. That's these finer thread, medium length. We have four, four of those. Okay, so it's definitely working. You can see it's separating already. I right, did a save for these over here. Finer thread, medium length compared to the others. All right. Okay, so this should, the base should be able to separate from the top. Okay, we're almost there. Looks like something's holding on to it. Um, we gotta figure that out. It feels as if something in the front is holding this on still, and I think it's underneath this plate, so I'm going to try to take this plate off and see what's under there. Uh, these are small. Yep, there's one more screw right here. I can feel it. See that right there? That's the one that's holding, holding the bottom onto the top. The base and then onto the top. There you go. This came right off. Okay, that's the fine thread medium. So looks like we have seven of those all, to, all day. Um, okay, so plate's off. This is free from the top. Okay, so we can have a little closer look now at the actual what's going on inside of there and the bulbs too. These two bolts are uh, 40 watt bulbs. Uh, they're E12 bulb, uh, bulbs. So that's E, letter E, elephant 12 bulbs. And uh, yeah, you can see it's broken right. Can you see that? Let's see how it's like, it's like a free agent. Just. Running around, being problematic. All right, cool. So I'm not attached to anything else. Um, that one also is broken. And that's why they're not um, generating any more light. Um, it's pretty obvious. You can see it a mile away. All right. And I noticed that they have a little bit of a white, um, some kind of, I don't know what that is. It's a, it feels like a silicone. Some kind of glue like to hold it into place. I'm not really sure why they did that, but that's a part of it. And now I want to take these four Phillips off to get to the heating element. Small, smaller coarse threads. So smaller coarse threads. We have four of these. Alright, 
this should lift off and now I should have access to it. Yeah, there you go, that's what I want. Okay, so we have, wow, that's neat. I see a magneto in there. I didn't expect to see that. Oh, that makes me laugh anyway. Every time I see that magneto, if you're an X-Men fan, you know what I mean? It's kind of hilarious. Okay, so let's take a look at the anatomy of this heating coil. Okay, we have an, a magneto right here. I don't forget, make sure this is unplugged. Um, magneto, this, these just connect to that front bulb. I have a feeling that, yep, yeah, that spins. So that's where we're getting the, um, the airflow from. I wonder if the, hmm, I've seen that bulb before in the past. Uh, I've definitely seen so all it, all it does is just blows air across that bulb to generate heat. And why would it not generate as much heat? I'm unsure. So what I think we should do is uh, clean all this out, turn it on, and see if uh, see what's happening. Just take a little better look at it. That's not a magneto, that's just a magnet. It's just a magnet that uh, looks like it's getting a charge, electrical charge from this. And it, um, and then, a, so there's, some, there's the opposite poles inside of that that causes this to spin. I think what we should do is uh, plug it in turn on and see how it behaves. Maybe we can measure the voltage across these terminals right here. I'm going to uh, give you this view so you can see the um, fan, how this changes or not. While well, I turn on in the front. Fan blows. Okay. So the dial up front doesn't change the velocity of this. How this fan blows. It's definitely um, quieter now because there's all the dust that was around it. It's no longer there. Um, I'm just playing with the dial right now, seeing if it changes, dial, see if it changes uh, the velocity of the fan. But it should because uh, I think it's, uh, it's a mono speed fan. Uh, what I do notice though is uh, if I turn that off, see that just sends power to the uh, heating unit itself. This is operates independently. Um, the lighting mechanism, it's on a whole other circuit. And, uh, it goes there. 
So, my hunch is, right, I'll check the voltage on that. I don't see that... I don't see any damage to the... I believe this is a capacitor right here. Usually when they're damaged, they're kind of swollen. Uh, that's not swollen. Um, I shouldn't touch this because it is plugged in, so sorry. Uh, I'm going to figure out a way to check the voltage across that to see if that is still giving the right amount of voltage. And then um, if everything goes well, I have a feeling it's just that, just that simple ball that needs to be replaced. That's it. I want to correct myself a little. Um, just correct myself. Degree doesn't matter. I made a mistake. Uh, this is a uh, thermal fuse. I have seen this before in um, in fans, uh, like box fans. I've seen first time I saw it was in a box fan. Uh, they will pop, and the reason why they pop it's because uh, if the fan has like lots of hair that gets wrapped around the actual motor, it'll it'll just get really hot. Well, it spins, and then this will, when this thermal fuse blows, and it just like the fan will stop spinning, just to keep it from like catching on fire. So that's intact. This is a, um, it's a thermal cutoff, and I don't see anything that looks obvious to me that it's broken. Now this is what I really am interested in because this is a temperature control. Now. That goes all the way to the front on this red wire, and I need to figure out a way to test to see if that temperature control is actually functional. So that's what I need to do to diagnose this because, like I said, every other part of this is actually functional right now. And uh, the reason why I know what these are, they actually are part of the diagram. So just take a look at that photo that I took of the actual diagram. The um, the circuit diagram, and you can, uh, it'll give you an idea what those are. Temperature controllers, uh, such as the one that feeds the heating element, that glowing thing you saw, um, this wire here runs from this back to the front. Now, here's the thing about, um, uh, temperature controls they come in like two types you either can do you end up you let it you'll either see a uh, like an open loop or closed loop now the open loop uh if you have an old enough car you you know when you set the temperature it's a it's just a dial you just turn it and turn it on right and it doesn't ever respond to the actual temperature in the car it just so in other words you put it on like five on a cold day, it feels great, but five on a really nice warm spring day, it just it's a little too hot. That's going to be an open loop, um, continuously um, heating kind of like um, temperature sensor. Uh, a closed loop, on the other hand, is the type that will respond to the temperature. It's like your house, the thermostat in your house, also the um, in your oven. Those are going to be a uh, closed loop, closed looped um, um, temperature. Uh, controllers. So I I want to uh, pull this off and see uh, I, I need to get to the the, uh, the sensor itself. Uh, this sensor is a closed loop. It doesn't ever change. It doesn't respond to the temperature outside. Okay. That is like a super small um, Super small screw, okay. All right. Now, I'm gonna chase this wire here. Let's see. On it. Okay. It's, it's uh, can you see that? It's this wire. And that wire. Yep, that makes sense. That goes into the, uh, yeah, I'll give you a better view. Alright. Uh, again, this wire here. Alright. 
is that, and that goes into this controller right here. Now, this is the dial that turns. Um, we need to say, figure out a way to test that thing right there and see if it's actually um, functional. Okay? Or so maybe we can bypass it and just keep it in the, in the hot setting. That's another option too. Okay, so I decided I'm going to do a continuity test. Uh, I have my um, multimeter in the... Uh, can you see that? That's not too blurry. Come on. Okay, so it's at 20 kilo ohms. That's pretty low because I don't think this thing has a lot of ohms. And the wires here, this is the wire that comes off, uh, plugs into the um, power of the heating element. And this is another wire that feeds from, I don't really know what, hmm, that, I don't know what that is. I, I gotta look at the front again. Uh, so, let's keep, keep your eye on that. So we have one, I want to get this as close as, if this is close to zero, then we, we're good with the continuity. So I'm just going to touch that there, touch that on that side. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, yeah. So the resistance on that. Go, go, better view. Can you see that better? Maybe even that. I don't know. Something that's less blurry. No, my hands are in the way. Yeah, let's try that. Okay. So let's see. Okay, so I'm touching that. Touch this. We get zero resistance across that, that switch. So that's good. Um, I think now we should test the wire right, that goes from here into the other. So I'm just going to jam that in there and see what we get over here. Well, hopefully you can see all of this. Um, what's that? Like we get zero resistance on this also. So yeah, that's really good. Okay, so the wire is good. Obviously, it gets power. Um, I don't even think that's really a good test. All right, what do we do? What do you suggest? What am I missing? Um, I'm not sure. You know, when I turn that dial, I wonder if it uh, opens and closes the circuit. You know? So let me let me see what that looks like. What happens when I turn that dial? Yeah, let's let's do that. So I went a little further and checked what was happening here. Uh, this is a on and off switch. Works great. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Turn it on and off. And uh, this is the wire that's connected from that switch to here that turns this on and off. And uh, this is just the dial, the rotating dial, and that gives it a, uh, you know, uh, I guess it tells it how much alternating current or amps. Hmm. I'm not sure if I can get the language right or that, but it regulates, it's a regulator of some sort for this temperature. And that will give the power, send the power to the uh, thermal, f um, the heating element. Now, if I check, I'm checking this for continuity. All right, the settings are still the same on a multimeter. And you can see that it's, it's, it's got zero resistance in there. So just good. I mean, this wire is fine. I am... So I'll, I'll put this wire back right here. Let's put that wire back. Hmm. You know what, actually, I want to ground out to... Uh, no, I think I'm fine. I, I was just going to check the switch itself, but I, I, I believe it's fine. I don't need to... Uh, yeah, we'll move on. 
I want to show you something just for testing purposes. This is not necessary. I don't think it makes a difference. Um, it has nothing to do with this, but I just want to show you some little extra. Uh, let's say you had a hunch you thought that that power switch was like uh, not sending power to there. This is how you can test it. So my multimeter is in the same it's 20k ohms. I take my alligator clip, right? Clamp it on there, and that's going to be the uh, positive. So, put that on there. Can you see that? Okay, so that's positive, right? It's positive. Now, the negative is going to be that white. It has to ground out to something. Right? So, I go like this. I touch the, hopefully you can see it, this negative part right here. And you'll see there's, there's nothing but a one in the continuity, that means there's no power going through, right? Now I'm going to flip that switch to the on position. So you can see what happens here. Okay. So that switch is in the on position now. And um, make sure you can see that again. Or not. Can you see that? Yeah. All right. Now the switch is in the on position. I'm going to ground this out again. You see how we have 2.7 of uh, across the board for that continuity. So that means that 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 switch is good. So it sends power. That's one way you can test it if you wanted to know how to test it on and off uh, switch. So this is what we know. We know that. That switch is functional, All right? So that means this is fine. This is not an issue. And the wire is also fine. Obviously, you could just test the wire and, you know, <laughs> if it works, it worked. Um, the, um, so let me show you what I mean. You can actually just, have just test the wire right to get that, but I was just, Being overly, overly zealous about this. Let's see if we can put this here. Can you see that? Yes. And then all you would have to do is uh, this is going to be positive coming out of that switch. Jam that in there, and then ground it out to the uh, white wire right there. See where two point seven. Sorry. So that wire would never ever get any. Um, uh, it would have a. Uh, if this if this if the switch was broken, this wire would never have a read in, in it. So either way, you can just check the wire or check the switch. So that's what we, that's what we just did. Now we know that that switch is fine. We just don't understand if this is actually providing the adjustment for that thermal um, for the heating element. Um, so. That's what I'm kind of stuck at right now. Um, the heating element should respond to this regulator of some sort. I've turned it, right? It's been on for about three minutes. Nothing changes. This doesn't get any hotter, doesn't get any cooler. That tells me that this is broken. See, I turn it, doesn't do anything, doesn't change anything in that heating element. What I think I'm gonna do, right? So you turn it, see what the, the, it changes its color right there. Fan's still on, That's this is power for the whole unit. This switch we know works, we know the wire goes out of it also works, right? When we turn it on, heating element comes on. I think it's right now at its uh, at a low setting. I feel that's where it failed at, or should I say the default failure? I think we can bypass this knob right here. Again, look at this. This should be at its lowest temperature. That does nothing. So just through deduction, I'm fairly certain that if we bypassed it, this will just be operated in its maximum capacity, which is totally fine. 
So if you don't want it on, just go like that. Cool? Again, this is a simple thermal unit. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Alright, so let us, we're gonna uh, unsolder that. We have nothing to lose, because it's already broken anyway, right? Reconnect it, solder it back together, see how that works. If that's hot, we've solved the problem, all right? Great. So again, as you can tell, it's not changing. I thought about this some more. I don't even need to solder anything. And here's a better test. This wire, we know, gets sends a voltage regulation to the uh, to the actual heating element, right? From that, and this gets power from this on and off switch, right? Now I was just gonna solder that to that, but I was like, why? So you just go like this to test it. Pull that off, right? Pull this out of the way, like that. Take this and just go directly to the power itself. Okay, now that bypass this regulator, uh, this um, temperature regulator, and will give us just straight power directly to the heating element. Now, once we turn it on, if we see that the temperature has changed, as in it's just like really hot, then we know for sure we did the right thing, and the temperature, um, this is actually bad. If we turn it on, and the temperature is remain the temperature remains the same. It's the heating element that's that's uh, that's causing us uh, the issue. I'm gonna plug this in. Turn on the power. Okay. Look down there. You should see. Oh, let's lower this down so it's not on yet, right? I'm gonna turn it on. And the fan's blowing. And this should get hot. It should get red. Yep, there it is. Okay. Fan's blowing well. Look at the heat and element itself is it's not like torturous on the heat side of things. Not one bit whatsoever. So here's my question. If a heat and element has failed or is failing, um, is it not as cold? Is it? Does it get? I'm mean, sorry. Does it get not as hot? Is it possible it just can it just can degrade in, in the amount of heat that it can generate? I'm unsure. I've never dealt with a heating element like this before. I'm sorry. I've never dealt with any heating element before in my life. Um, that is the question. So we need to. I don't know. Figure out what else we can do to figure to see how we can test this. You know, but right now, I'm getting the same end result. It's not getting any um, hotter. It feels exactly the same. All right, great. So, all right, it's been about three minutes later, and uh, I need to get that bulb, the heating element, cooler. And uh, to do this, what I want to do, um, I'm sorry, it's cool already. I need to get this plate off so I can get to that heating element. And this, I'm gonna have to mark this this white one here. This is gonna be the uh, the top. And since that's the top, I pull this off. I gotta get under here. See that? All right, great. There are these like little tabs, kind of like hold. 
holds this thing in place. Looks like, yeah. Okay. It's good. Let's see if that makes sense. Does that make sense? No, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> All right. Let's push those back down. My task is I need to get to that bulb. Oh, I'm sorry, heating element. You call it a bulb. It's like a bulb, right? <laughs> it's glowing. And uh, to do that, I thought this would just lift off this plate. All right, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'll take a look at it for a little bit. But my issue is I need to get this up and out of the way so I can uh, get to that bulb. Uh, I'm sorry, the heating element. And so, okay, this whole thing comes out. These four screws right here. These are the ones that are holding it into place. Get these out of the way. Yes. Okay. These are super small. Oh boy. They're small. They're on the smaller side. Hopefully you can see that. Alright. See that's those are those. Those are much smaller screws. Kind of fine thread. candidates for things to be lost if they fall. But lucky for you, I'm not going to drop them anymore. There you go. So that's just separated from that. Alright, so we have this. Yeah, there you go. Okay. This entire unit lifts out like that. Bingo! That's what we want. Can that... I don't know if that can be replaced just by itself. I don't really know. Um, What is this thing? Yeah, no. See that? That's a spring attached. Because that does that pull out? Mm. Okay, it's a little, a little warm still. How does that work? Let me put on my glasses. For some glass shatters and losing eyesight, making a stupid video on how to deal with this damn China. Made in China. Cheap stuff. Um, okay, so I see a tab here and a tab there. And I thought maybe I can just pull this right out, you know, like that. At this point, I have nothing to lose. So um, this is one big piece, the plastic part. This looks like that comes out. Um, Hmm. When I looked online in the, in the past, these this is a heating element, and uh, I think it comes as like one big piece, but I'm not sure. I think this will come right out. What do you think? Without breaking something? <laughs> so it looks like it's breaking it. Yeah. 
That just looks like a shield or some sort. Yeah, that's not a. That's not going anywhere. Alrighty. Okay. Yeah, that's not going anywhere. That just plugs into there. Heats up that wire. Um. Thermal fuse is fine. This um, thermal, it's a thermal cutoff. This is also fine. All right, so I think this whole unit needs to be replaced. Okay, and uh, I have a number for you. Product number, model number, whatever. So I put the wire in back in the original format so you can see what's happening. Um, I'll use a pointer t also, just to minimize my fingers in the way. All right. So what we have on this side is a on this side is a on and off switch. Right. That on and off switch. Sorry. I think that might have blocked your view. Uh, the pointer. This on and off switch here has in the middle a red wire, which is a hot wire, right? That will power the heating element. That's what this is. This is like a, like I said, it's a heating, it's a, a temperature regulator, uh, uh, temperature regulator. And um, this will send power from here to the heating element. Right, so it, this power sends power to here. This regulates how much power comes to the heating element. Now, what we want to do, hopefully that was easier to see. We have, okay, this white, so every, every, every electrical thing here requires a positive and a negative, right? and um, it needs to ground out everything. So you, there needs to be some power, hot side, which is usually red, and something ground in out neutral, which is this white. All of these, right, so this needs power to turn this fan. We have this, it's not a, it's, oh, I forgot the name, it begins with a C, conduit. I don't know. I'll, re I'll try to I'll get the name for us. And this metal grate in the back here, that right there, also needs power. So what we have is grounded out the, the, uh, the, the I guess this would be like the, the heating element back there. That is grounded out to here. This front thing also gets hot. That gets grounded out. And then also this um, magnetic like coil will also need to be grounded out, and that, that's what provides the spin for this fan. Now all of those ground out to this. Right. You saw me take that apart. Now we get to get the power. The power comes in from here. This is this longer wire is the. Is the um, let's put your back up right here. Okay, watch the long wire. See it's getting pulled. See that? Yeah. Okay. This goes into this heating element here and powers this entire. So you back out. And powers, sends power to this entire thing in this entire heating unit with the fan blower also. So it goes like this. This powers all of it. Goes right into there. And then the, this needs to have some electricity, hot, right, on the red side. So come over here. 
And what the manufacturer did was, okay, again, this goes into here, right? And we have ourselves a, um, this is a, uh, a thermal fuse, and this is a thermal cutoff right here. It goes into there, thermal cutoff, thermal fuse, and then it goes back out. Right? It goes back out, electricity is traveling this way. The positive here will feed the positive in the heating element in the back and the bulb in the front. That's what those two are. And this is daisy chained, uh, I think that's the right term, to this so it can also have power. So that one button up there controls all of this, right? Now, here's the thing. We have ourselves a new one. So I'm gonna pull this off, and this is our new one. Our new one, much simpler. There is no heating element in the front. I, again, I'll get the name for that. Uh, so we have one less wire to connect, right? We now need to rewire this, so this gets power. So this is this is already grounded out. This is going to be the grounded outside here. This comes in hot. This blue I'll take off. Or no, I won't. I'm just going to run this blue out to the front. And this second blue here will probably have to connect into here to power the uh, heat. And this is going to be the ground. Okay? And we'll just attach that to the front of that. Uh, just like this. Yeah. All right. And that should do it. So let's, uh, I'm going to look at it for a little bit. See how we're going to rewire this. And uh, we'll go from there. What I really wanted to do uh, was take this entire house in here and just replace that but this is actually quite beefier it's much larger so i'm assuming it's going to produce more heat than the one that's back there which is considerably smaller and then this like augmented it i believe um let's see if that makes sense i was going to try to save this um by like uh cutting the metal off and sticking it onto here and putting it on i don't think i need to do that i'm going to see how this runs without it and we'll go from there all right all right, <laughs> oh man, here we go. So I got to make sense of this, and um, uh, first thing I want to do is definitely unclip that. Let's see what's happening over here. Okay. So again, these two used to be connected like that. Now this hot needs this needs to be connected to something. Okay. So that's how that's built. Kind of slipped into that. Let's see. So what I can do here is so now this is going to go out to the front to get the electricity. Okay, and these two, we'll put them together like that and connect them into there. Yeah, I think that's the plan. All right, so that's how we're going to rewire this. Figured it out. Yep. Let's see? All right, let's, uh, let's just unscrew this. Back in. So you can... As far as it goes, really. I guess it's a better shot. Than it. Yeah, let's take that off. Um, yeah, let me back off a little bit more. So I want to get that off. That looks like a Phillips. Obviously. Um, yeah, I'm prepared. I'm totally prepared. Oh, yeah. I've got everything lined up. 
just as I need it. Alright, I'll be right back. Totally making the most common mistake when you're doing how-to videos. You shoot from the side that you're, uh, you are like doing stuff from. You're gonna block it out. Probably the better angle would be something like this, <laughs> you know. But anyway, here we go. Maybe I should write something on here just to help me. I'm gonna write G. Like that. Boy, that's a good G. How about that? Yeah, see that? That's a G right there. Your mother would love. Look at that. It's beautiful. You can tell I went to Catholic school, right? Okay. Um, hmm. yeah, let's finish taking that off. More difficulties getting things out of the way. Oh. Try to pull that off, you gotta pull that off. You gotta pull this off to get that off. I can't get to that without pulling this off. Okay, no problem. I've got your back right here. So that's that. It's like a washer on there. See, oh, it looks like a magneto, doesn't it? Looks like a flywheel, I mean. All right. So that is that. Got distracted. It was like a squirrel. I was like, what's this? It spins. Anyway, um, so it was like that, right? You sure? Uh, I hope it was. Okay. I'm going to take this. And place that. That, I think it'll line up. It's for a different total model. Let's see if it'll line up. Yeah, we have a match, Houston. Okay, so. so. <laughs> Watch it match on one side, not the other, right? Uh, yeah, this is like you said matches on one side, not the other. All right, so what do we got to do? Can't win in life, can you? It's never that easy. How about inside? We go on the inside. See if that works. Any better. Ugh. Hmm. All right, let me try to figure out how we're going to get that on there. It's a little off. So I think I got it. I'm going to go like this. Instead of going on the outside, with these tabs. 
right here. I'm going to go one on the outside, one on the inside. So I'll put that on the inside and this on the outside. Let's see how that goes. All right, hold your breath. <laughs> Famous last words are told, girl. That was really bothering me. Hold your breath. I think I'll, I'll be right over. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be bad if we just get one side on. What do you think? I don't know. Okay. So that's the inside. Do you think uh, I got one on the outside out here? I don't, I don't even think you saw that. Did you see that? I do really like by pull it off frame. Yeah, let's see. Let's try to do this again on in frame. Right, you can see that little shadow of like where material was. That's where the uh, other one was. So this is on the inside, on that side. Um, if you're wondering why I'm wearing gloves, it's kind of cold. And, uh, the metal is sharp, so this this really helps um, with some comfort. Being in the uh, being in the environment that I am in right now is a little on the colder side. So, okay. As you can tell, this is on the outside. This is on the inside. I had to do that because it wouldn't fit. Okay. So now that we have that on, right? We need to now attach the uh, the blower motor back. So let's put that back on. Oops. Shit. No, don't do that. Stay there. This was like that. Oh no. What was it? Yeah, it was more like this. Okay, there you go. Okay. We're almost there. We're almost there. So before we proceed and connect this all back together, I wanted to test it. Oh well, I'm jumping ahead. I didn't even, got, I didn't even get the wiring done yet. So let's get the wiring done. Let's see what we can do. I have this cool little idea that I've been thinking about. I wanted to share with you. It's a, it's an idea, just a psychology idea, something that I've been throwing around with uh, trauma and you know, how trauma functions in a person's mind. So what I've been thinking about, right, is that I have a friend. My friend is homeless. My friend has been spending some time at my house. Not too much. Maybe like, it's been here like two times. And uh, I'm a little concerned about how much I should help the guy. Oops, gave away his gender. I meant it's a girl. <laughs> yeah. Um, and my issue is, is uh, I, he... Uh, it feels very uh, unstable, as in they are having a hard time, and I can see it in their social media presence, and their behavior concerns me, and I'm concerned that I'm going to expose myself by helping them. See, I've been burnt in the past, being nice to people. And, uh, I'm not exactly the best person when it comes to like figuring out exactly how to help people. So I understand that. And in doing so, what's happening is that I'm very much afraid to help my friend. Which is basically a traumatic response I'm experiencing. Alright, um, so I don't know what to do, you know? Do I help him? get burnt again in life, you know, because you can't predict people, right? But all you can do is just say, improve your ability to uh, deal with the uh, disappointment that comes with helping people. All right, so this is going to be our um, ground negative, so that has to come out to here and attach to this white wire, something like that. 
Got it. And this, I mean, you should probably, should probably cut. Hmm, I don't know if I should cut that. Okay. This red here needs to slide into here. And then that's going to slide onto this to give it some power. All right, uh, I'm going to open that up a little bit wider so I can get my room. Yeah, so as I was saying, you know, I, um, I've been very generous in my past with helping people, and that has yielded a bit of a problem for myself. Well, I like to be generous, but I don't like to get taken advantage of, you know? It's a bit of a catch. I'm sure some of you have been on that boat before. When it sets the sail, it's quite stormy. If it's not a reciprocal uh, experience. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to figure out what to do, but not really sure how to do it. You know? The problem with trauma is that it just tends to like create these like genera generalities that are somewhat erroneous when it comes to like uh, its value when it, when you look at people in general. You know, there are very few safe generalizations you can make in life, you know. But there are. Don't get me wrong. There are some some very real generalizations. I have a list. Maybe we could talk about it sometime. But in this situation, you know, I, I don't know if my friend actually feels like a good person to me, you know, it's like it's worth investing in all my time and energy in, you know, because I don't want to get screwed again. So that's my catch. I don't really know what to do. I do not know what to do. That will not work. So yeah, you know, how do you respond to your trauma when you recognize that trauma is driving your actions? You know, how do you judge people? Give them a fair shot, let them show up differently, you know? That's really what you're trying to do. You want to give people the fair chance to show up differently in your life. Show up differently in life general, period. You know, people change. I'm just widening the tip of this. You know. If you don't understand that people change, you're missing out on a whole lot of friendships. <laughs> you're no fun to be around, that's for sure. So that's, that's, that looks wider. All right. Let's see if that works. Boogers! All right. Let me try to solve that off camera and see what we get. Let's try a little something bigger. A good old screwdriver. A little bigger screwdriver. A bigger flathead. So that works. So I'm just trying to get some height. Feels like a feels like a moment I should be using my vice. Oh, that's gonna work. Yeah, it's got a lot more room. So let's see if that makes a difference. Almost. Yeah, well. Come on. You know you want to do it. Come on. Yeah! Bingo! Alright. So. Let's see how that works. Yeah. Just like that. Okay. Looks good. What do you think? Alright. So now we have hot coming in hot. 
right? Daisy chain to that. Then we ground out this to the white. And then we're going to just want to clip that, expose that, and then we'll uh, ground this out. All right, let's give that a try and uh, reconnect it and see what we get. I need to connect this ground, that ground, to that white wire. And to do that, I'm going to have to cut this and expose it. So, let's see. So, I'm going to cut a little bit extra so I can, in case I mess up and I have to reconnect that. Um, so that's that. That. And we have this wire. Can you see? Yeah. These two need to be grounded to that. Remember, there's only two now because only the fan is getting power and the heating element. I'm no longer powering um, that. Okay. Uh, I didn't even get you the name of that yet, but I do have the name. I'll tell you the name. I think it begins, it begins with a C. Okay. It needs to be like that. And we had on top of it so this clamp like that. So let's screw these together. I'm gonna put on glasses for that because I don't want those little pieces to fly in my eye, so just let me know what I'm doing. It's all temporary anyway. Do I really need to put, do all that? It's just temporary. I need to check it and see what's going to work. But anyway, still do it. Just kind of paranoid. Okay. If it works great. Let's widen in the, this here. I probably should have just gotten a new one. You know, so you can see it. It's inside of there. Uh, a little, little bright. Yeah, there you go. So I'm just widening, widening the space. So when I slide this in, it will be kind of easy. Okay, that's great. So now that's in. Put that all the way down. Yeah, jam it in like that. I'm gonna go back to the side that it feel it was naturally it was on beforehand. <sighs> I think vice grips would be better for this. But anyway, so that's pretty tight. Um, now let's come around here so you can see what's going on. This side. Yeah, that's a big move, All right? Anyway, let's see. Okay, this red wire here is no longer of use to us, so we're gonna disconnect it. That's this 
this power supply here is this wire here. So let's pull that off of there temporarily. Right? We're going to take this blue. This blue is going to be the hot side now. That powers the fan. Okay. All right, people, are you ready? All right, everything goes well. We should see here some nice, beautiful, hot, glowing thing. <laughs> oh boy, famous last words. I'll bring you around, plug it in, see what happens. So I'm a little paranoid of electricity. Um, gratefully, so this is not my area of expertise. Ask me anything about human behavior, computer science. I got your back. Okay, so this is what I did. I turned the, oh, hold it open. Hey, see that right there? the power button on for both of them heat all the way up to the max that's off okay I got it on okay Oops. all right you're probably seeing nothing useful right now okay good so that means right when I turn this on that should just start spinning we should see some heat remember this blue now right into the hot side right here see right there okay that's the blue wire that feeds the entire heating element okay so here is our plug I am gonna not do that I'm gonna plug that in but I'm gonna use that to turn it on and off all right all right so we have it all set up I'm gonna turn it on, let's see what happens. All right, so far so good. Ooh, I feel heat already. Oh, it's pretty hot. Yeah, it's getting hot. That's crazy, the difference, you know? Let me um, get this wire out of the way. So you can see. Oh yeah, that's um, <laughs> that's very hot. It's nothing like what was there before, which is good. Um, yeah, before it was just lukewarm, and you can barely. barely keep your hand there. This is. Very hot right now. Yeah. All right, so we'll keep this running for a little bit. We'll see how uh, much hotter it gets. Cool. It's been going strong for about 20 minutes and um, it's definitely warmer in the room. I can tell you that it's not significant. It's not the coldest day in the, the year, but so at this moment, right, you can stop, put this ball back together and call it a quits. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to uh, take, I'm going to try to take the Caldor, that's what this is called, and place that onto here. Now to do that, I'm going to have to do a couple things. I'm going to cut some of this off. I'm going to try to rivet it on together, see if I can keep it small enough so it actually slides back into the unit. Um, I'm going to have to redo some wiring, so I'll have to cut some of the harness off of this setup to accommodate this. Um, I thought about maybe trying to salvage this top part because it has the thermal fuse, which is great for safety. Cuts off in case of like uh, overheating. I'm not sure yet, uh, but let's get set up. Uh, it's going to be a little longer process, but you know, we're doing it for the heck of it, right? All right. 
gonna pull this apart and to do this I need to uh, there's some tabs here before I go ahead and try to put it onto that um, you know I just want to make sure that I guess I can my ideas will work so to pull the, I need to separate these top parts so I can get this metal part and a caldera into position uh, so there are these tabs it like that and you might ask yourself oh well, why why do this so you've you've replaced the heating element yes I have the problem is it's not as hot as it I think it could I think it's supposed to be much hotter it doesn't feel like it's gonna heat up the room as much as it says it's supposed to and um, I recognize that this caldor helped add extra heat so, I'm going to try to salvage this thing by rebuilding it. I'm going to get my rivet gun set up. Let's do some riveting. At this side, I'm going to have to drill into the uh, side of that. So, it would be a good idea to get my drill all charged. What do you think? Yeah. Alright, so that's off. Let's pull this off. Okay. Like I said, at this point you can stop. You don't have to do anything else. But I'm just going to try to go a little further and see if I can get this to a place where it actually generates some considerable amount of heat. Right. So that's those two pieces. All right, removed. All right, put those over here. And here we have our friend, the Caldor. You, my friend, oh, that's what I want. Okay. That's attached to this, and I don't know what's under there, so let's, let's take a look. Dive into this, cut into this a little. Um, yeah, cut towards yourself. That's, that's Can you see that? All right. Let's really see what's happening under here. Okay. So what they did was clamp these two down together. All right, not a problem. I'm, I don't really have this harness to replace it with exactly. I think I do, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, it doesn't look like I do. Okay, so I'm gonna try to salvage this to do that. Just gonna open this up here. Stay in frame, all right. Okay, push that out. Freeze that wire. Again, don't want to break this. This is good stuff. I'm trying to save here. Okay, peel that back. And then... Uh. This point it might be easier just to like so can I get in here? Separate this. Hmm. And then 
environmentalist side of me says try to save this as much as possible and so just cutting it off and, and getting a new tab um, What I really need is some shrink wrap. Um, called, uh, all right, so the wires are free. That's going to be a little hard to reuse. I do have an equivalent. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll give this a little snippy. Not the way I wanted to do it, but whatever. Okay. Sipping those off. Yeah. Okay, we have this side over here that we want also. Like this. We're trying to save save it like that. Cool. Because I know that this worked. At least last time we checked it, it did. And uh, let's get that out of the way. And I want to kind of like reclamp that back on like that. Yeah? You know? Alright, so that's the plan. Let me think about it for a second. This is what I'm trying to do. I need to take this here, cut it out, slide it into there, and I need to drill a hole. Just enough through there so it And sit right in front of this. That's the goal. Okay, and uh, I can't go too far out because what will happen is I'm going to uh, I'm going to it has to sit it has to sit inside of the uh, the bottom of this unit. So that's what I'm trying to do. And um, that means I need to do something like this. The cut like that. I think that's good. to go up like that also just because I need to get this to uh sorry I need to get that to sit back so something like that I need to do yeah all right um so we have two of them oh hey Two of them like that. All right, let me uh, let me go ahead and get some measurements, and I, I don't have know what I'm going to use to cut this, but uh, figure something out. So I think it would be a good idea to uh, let me tape these two together like that. Let's get them lined up. Kind of line them up. <laughs> I think it'll work. 
coming. This is just going to help with uh, just marking things, cutting things. Mostly needed for marking, so. What are you doing in the middle? The joys of working and seeking a high level of quality in your work is that you do things like this. And you can just like hand cut it, leave it alone, but I don't know. It's a little better. So that's good enough. That's going to give me the chance to mark it. So that way I don't have like something symmetrical happening on both sides. So what we know is um, I'm going to get this to get as close as possible to straight if you're not using the straight side too much I mean I can't think of because of that ah whatever all right let's see what this Yeah, that looks great. Look at that. It's so spot on. Um, yeah, that's just not good enough. Okay. Maybe I had to kind of eyeball it. Let's see. That's that. Okay. I do prefer the way this lines up. It's not too bad over here. All right, and then we need to come across on the inside. So we'll come across on the inside. Probably the better way to do that would be, uh, yeah, let me take this stuff off. Take the tape off here. Okay. So let's measure this. We'll go about. We'll cut down on that line and then. Down where we want to go. Let's see. Yeah, let's get close to that. So, all right, so we'll just follow this line over. That's what we'll do. We'll just follow that line right over. So we'll cut straight across like that. And yeah. 
this doesn't have to be very, very perfect. <laughs> well, very perfect. There's no degree of perfect. <laughs> it doesn't have to be um, precise. That's much better language. And uh, that should give us the size we need to slide the calder in, cut that off, and we'll slice back this way. And that should get us off. Yeah, so down like that, down like that, and in like that. All right, so this happens to be just thin enough metal that I can just cut it with the scissors. So I'm kind of lucky in that way. Probably scissors probably ruined after that, but whatever. I need a new one anyway. Okay. I am noticing I could flatten it out to make my life easier. So, warning, it's going to be a sharp edge on this thing here. So just be careful. You can see it. Okay, get that back. That. I'm going to take off the tops. Take this top off here. Okay. That's one side. We're just going to drill a hole into that. So. Let's strain this out. In advance. Shoot. Hmm. Did I finish my conversation about uh, trauma? Uh, right, let me t t continue. So what I was saying is. Um, Trauma functions in a really strange way. Um, it's it's invisible to most people, you know. You're just a very automated response to things, stimuli in the world. And uh, what happens is uh, you start to create these uh, precepts that you use to uh, respond to stimuli. And these precepts are often, uh, they're disproportionate to the way things are really happening. And uh, because of how disproportionate they are, you end up with these like um, conclusions that are very much um, uh, eccentric, that's the best way to say, a hyperbole of what's really happening. And because of these uh, disproportionate response, uh, you often alienate things and individuals that probably will not do the thing that you're afraid of the most to you. And that's why you end up losing out on a lot of really quality interactions with people because you're not able to override your, um, your anxieties and fears from the traumatic uh, experience that you had in the past. And uh, so I'm aware that I'm experiencing some, some recoil recoil from uh, my traumatic experiences in the past and trying to override them and show up for my friend. Uh, am I doing a good job at it yet? No, I can do a little better. Uh, so 
you know, I'm also really paranoid about like suicide because of, uh, you know, of some of you might have lost enough people in your lives. Can't say anything, can you? All right. Because of suicide. Suicide's a real thing. A lot of people choose to self-terminate. And uh, usually you don't do it when you're having a good time. <laughs> or if you do, it's just because your good time is probably bent on something that tampered your chemical, it's the chemical state in your brain, and then you thought it would be a good idea to jump off of a bridge or something, or just keep taking more of the drug. Um, so my friend, I don't want to lose my friend, because of some, uh, you know, ideas of like, that he has of a loneliness, depression because of a situation. So I really got to think about it heavily, what I want to do, you know, because uh, time is ticking. So, yeah. All right, moving on. All right. What do we have? So these, um, these turn out pretty nice. So they'll fit like that. Both of them. And I just need to, like, put a hole. It's symmetrical in both of these. So, um, what we have is a, uh, a rivet. We're going to rivet these together. Now, this rivet is, um, can you see that? It's uh, 5 30 seconds. Oh, getting in closer. No glare. Does that make sense? Yeah, maybe that might work. Maybe not. Okay, that's probably better. So this is uh, 5 30 seconds across the top, and I need to drill a hole that matches that size. So we're going to get 5 30 seconds right here like that and use that. But before we do that, we need to uh, do a, uh, make a center punch hole. One sec. A lot of moving pieces to this ship. All right. So we are going to try to come across right here, like that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Sure does. Right, right in the front. Right there is nothing there. Nothing to con conduct any electricity. So. Hold this up. So we can get a better way to do this here, because I need to push this up yeah, like that, and then push it down. Well, the metal's so soft, the punch didn't even need to go off. Well, it can't, because I can't even get it pushed down. But I think that should be good enough. Yeah, it's simply indented. Um, okay, now what we want to do is take... Uh, take our drill. And... See if we can... Get that hole a little wider, just enough to accept the rivet. And uh, I'm going to put a little bit of cutting oil on here, this little drop in that hole. Get your glasses, which are becoming really hard to find since I uh, keep adding more stuff to my pile of stuff that I used to fix stuff. But, <laughs> I 
half an hour later. Okay. So let's see what we got. Oh yeah, that's working right. Yeah, no. Let's see. Okay, let's try that again. <sighs> you know what they say. Start trolling from a smaller size. Let's go like, let's do one eighth first. Final size. Okay, so that's that. And still a cup. I don't want to damage the heating element. So I gotta be careful here. My drill bit went through. So bumped bumped it a little bit here. Okay. Alright. Just about nothing's broken. Uh, let's just double check the rivet. Yeah, come on. Let's go, bro. Come on, let's see what you got. Now that river looks a little, a little pesky. Let's try another one. Should slide into that a little easier. Um, let me see if I can uh, make this hole a little wider. See that? All right, good. It's kind of went around in a circle. Now these rivets are medium in length. Might be a little, yeah, that's better. Might be a bit of an overkill, but I think we're good. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. You saw what happened, so be too excited. Right, we're gonna go over here. Flip this over. Let's pull these off. Get that out of the way. And then we're going to uh, use my awesome center punch. Just, just lost the bearing. Yeah, I'm going to find that. Let's see what it looks like over here. Okay. In the middle. 
kind of like forwards. Like this middle, kind of like forwards. Keep that in the middle. Okay. All right, that's supposed to snap, but you won't hear it snap because it is not, um, what do you call it? It's not getting enough resistance to load the spring. So again, we gotta go a little bit of uh, cutting oil. It's a small amount, just a little dab in the hole and we're going to do this a little differently we're going to actually going to start smaller bit then go up in size um, this is a 5 64ths Not to damage the heating unit again. So then we're going to go to one eighth. Final hole, which is uh, five thirty seconds. It's going to put a little bit more. Um, can you see? Make sure you're not left out. A little more cutting oil on this blade. I think. I think this needs to be replaced. Doesn't feel like it's cutting out well anymore. Okay. When you drill into metal, you gotta make sure your RPMs are slow. You don't want to go really high in the RPMs because uh, what'll happen is uh, you'll just burn out a bit. You won't actually. Um, you won't actually go forwards. So, okay, that works. All right, so we have the holes set for the side, right? We need to take these and then put them in like that. Just enough that we can get the heater unit in position without too much of an issue, right? So what I'm doing, I'm going to try to mark it from the back here. And then I'll make the exact same hole. So I'm going to go as far in as I technically can. A little dot there. Okay, so that's my hole, right? And then I'm going to line these two up. Like that. Just clamp those two together and uh, drill right through. That's the plan. Oh. So these two pieces are uh, taped together, 
right? And uh, I'm gonna try to drill a hole through this. So you'll probably see how this actually works now. So that's gonna be my center hole. See, you push down and it makes a nice indentation. I usually do like uh, two or three, depending on how hard the metal is. This is super soft metal, so I'm not really too worried about more than once. I just did it again so you can see it. We'll do the same thing. Start with a smaller diameter, then I will escalate. a butt to get out. Hate, hate the design. Works well to keep it there. Not well to take it out easily. Alright, so we're at 530 seconds. So this is it. If it doesn't, if it's not a good, if that doesn't line up well, I'm screwed. Okay. There's no going back. It's like getting married. Um, I guess you could go back, but at least make sure you have a prenuptial agreement. Depending on the amount of assets you have. Doesn't end well for some people. Conscious and coupling, that's the best way to go. Okay. That looks great. We're almost there. And probably want to. Yeah, just smack that down a little. Yeah. yeah, cool. And that would be it. I'll probably put that in the chain and uh and then I'll uh, flatten it out. So put it in the chaining and flatten it out. I think that's the plan. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking good. Let's just double check and make sure the uh, that rivet's gonna go in there without a problem. Nice. Definitely go someplace. But not where I want it to go. Go go get it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to wind this up a little. Yeah, so. All right, that's what I was afraid of. Yeah, that's better. All right, so, see what I did? Okay, great, so we have that in place and uh, those should fit in position and we should be able to river them together. Looks good. Before we go any further, I just need to make sure that this will actually have space to fit. Um, if everything goes well, I, I should. I'm unsure, so you have to test it because you know I am going to place a uh, a rivet on there, and that's gonna it's gonna be a little difficult to take it off easily. Yeah, that's gonna work. All right, <laughs> that was a fail, right? Let's try another tape job. Let's try that. Yeah, that's much better. Like 
that. Always make sure you uh, take all this tape off completely because remember, um, it could be potentially an incendiary situation if you get my drift. Uh, in other words, the tape might catch on fire because this will get hot because it does contain a heating element. Okay, so let's see how well we do. Okay, we are already seeing some issues with the there. Let's push that over. Mm hmm. What do we have here? Small form factor issue. All right. So I can see already we're gonna have some issues with this protruding a bit. I know. What do you think? We can cut some of this off. Yeah. What do you think? Like that much. Get it really close, but not all the way. Close, but not all the way. <laughs> you think that? That's pretty close. I don't know how I did that. I don't know if I can do it again either. Let's see. Again, you don't have to do this. You know, you could stop and just put this back together. Fast forward to to put it back together or watch me pull it apart and just put it back together from that. I just really want to see if I can save this. Yeah, that looks just about right. That's that's going to work. Yeah, that's definitely going to work. So you flip it over. Let's see where those holes are. That's where they are. Yeah, I see no issues. If anything push comes to shove, what I'll do, I'll just uh, try to push on the metal grate a little bit, see if I can get some space. I know. Let's see. Let's give it a try. I think it'll work. All right. What do I mean by that? Uh, let me cut the other side off a similar way. Think I can do it again? I don't know. That felt like magic. Whoa, home ec has taught me something. I am a winner. Alright, you notice that I wrote some similar markings? That's to help me know that that's the orientation that they were lined up together, stacked. So I put them back on together. I keep that same orientation. Alrighty, let's see what we have here. So we got a rivet gun. I'm gonna throw it on like that. Okay, let's get over. I hope this goes without too much of a problem. Rivet in this. Kind of, uh, kind of dicey at times. Okay. Yeah, that looks good. Put in. All right, that's good. This side on. Again, the uh, needs to look like that. See? So keep that orientation. Slide that on. Okay, but before I rivet that in, I need to put the uh, cow door in position. So let's get that. In. So we have, what did we, what did we start and we're gonna, okay, all the, okay, so actually it doesn't matter because, yeah, we'll put, this was uh, on that side of the negative, so that's cool. Pass that through here. Yep, 
pull up through this like that. Good, great. All right, and then take that. It's the same orientation. Yeah. That there, pass that through to there, like that. Okay, great. And then, boy, what do we have here? All right, no issues, please, please, no, come on. Don't fight me. Please, please, please don't fight me. How come these things never work out exactly the way you want them to in life? So. Okay, you know what I gotta do? Oops. I need to just push this back a little bit on this side here. I think it just collapsed down a bit too much. A difference. All right. Kind of. That's, that's that. All right. Pull that there. Let's see that lines up. Yeah, that's it. That's so much better. Okay. Get yourself a rivet. For those of you who have never owned a rivet gun, I highly recommend you get it. It comes with, uh, these are three different nozzles to match the kind of rivet size you have. And uh, not all rivet brands are equal. I would get these this Aries brand is really good. I've owned two others from the big block retailers and they are very bad. As in they break within like 50 uses. Like this part gets jammed all the time. You're like fighting with it. So that's it. Um, we have it connected. So what we're gonna do now, we have to redo the wiring on this to see if we can get everything all happy with electricity. And we can go from there. Warden, a neophyte wiring project. All right. Uh, hmm. So I figured out what I'm gonna try to do. Let's go ahead and strip this off first. I should tell you the whole thing so you can see. So I'm going to strip this off. I'm going to butt uh, this wire with this wire like that. Make sure you can't even see anything. Let me back off some. Okay, so again, I'm going to take this wire. I'm going to butt it together with this wire and connect it like that. And then I'm going to run, cut, cut this side off, place that on there, that circular looking tab like that. And then I'm going to slide that into the hot side over here with the three of these. So it goes like that. Those two together. And then this is gonna go into there like that. And that's that's gonna that's the goal. So let's see if I can do this in under ten minutes. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. It's gonna be a lot of challenges along the way. Here we go.
Try not to take too, too much off. Don't really need a lot. be enough. And then should go to slide that into there. So that's in. Okay, so that's clamped it down. We'll take this side here. this off. That's off. Strip this just a little bit, just enough to slide into that uh, down a bit. Put that in. So that's Let's cut a little bit off. So those two are connected. All right, what we're going to do is take this side now, cut this side off, and attach the uh, other. Let's see if this cuts it better than the other tool I was using. I think I used the wrong part of the tool. Should have used that part right there. That would have done it. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to strip this side. Again, not too much because it's just going to stick inside of that. Uh,
Man, I wouldn't want one of those things to fly into my eyeball. I just thought about the dangers of that. Okay, so go here. Twist that down. Now we're at 7 minutes and 20 seconds. Okay, so with that there, just get the red part here. Slide that in. Like that. Make sure it's all the way in. So that's good. Now we should be able to slide that in. So here we go. This is the entire hot side. Uh, I try to like line up the bottom of this. It doesn't really line up well with this in front. So we don't need to have it screwed in. That's the good part. So I'm not worried about that. But I do need to get this off now so I can put this hot onto that also. So let's take that off. Shall we? Spin this into that mess right there. So let's undo all of those, pull them out, and give this a little bit of attention with the others. That's really good stuff. I'm gonna open up this. <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. That's just comical. Each one of those definitely nice and tight. I'll tighten it up a little bit more so you get like a little bit more compression on that. All right, that feels really secure to me. Okay, so now we have everything grounded. Um, we need to take the hots, put the hots back. So we are going to. Um, this comes in from the front because it's a little, uh, not as wide. Oh man, 11 minutes, 24 seconds. I suck. Okay, um, let's see how we can, how this is gonna work. So, see how lucky we're gonna be with this. Right, um, that's my uh, fan, power for my fan, power for the heating element. Goes like that. Then, Gonna take um, oops. this hot, slide that into the fan, and then those two should be connected and given up power, and I should put the 
feed this into, you know what, I might want a zip tie like that. Yeah, probably. All right, let me, uh, let me get a zip tie. Actually, I think these things might have lots of names. I don't, I don't think it's not a zip tie. I think it's a cable tie. That's what they call it. Um, what do they call it where you are? I think they're called cable ties. Mostly. All right. So we have. I'm gonna go like that. And that should keep them together. And then now we place, since we have our ground at the top up here, we're gonna put the positive. Hmm. Might have a bit of an issue there, don't we? No, not really. I hope we bend it. Yeah, there you go. Voila. And that's why they bent it originally. Good, perfect. And that's it, that's the wiring we're gonna use. And then this will be the power that comes out from the front. Easy peasy, right? So let's start putting this back together. Now actually we gotta test it. All right, let's test it, one second. If everything goes right, I'll turn it on and we should see lots of heat and feel. Mostly see, I don't know if you can, I mean, I'm sorry, feel, I don't know if you can see heat. Well, I'm sorry, you can see the wave of light kind of, sorry, heat kind of changes the way things, it's not good or not. That's not good. No, wait, I didn't turn it on. Okay, sure. Hold on. Are you ready, people? Ready, folks? There we go. Make sure there's nothing in the fan way. Okay, power there. Okay, let's give it a try. That's a good sign. I'm just gonna put on my glasses. So what the hell is gonna happen here? Wow, that's hot. Yeah, that's about that's that's like way hotter. Oh, geez. Wow, that's a big difference. Okay. Yeah, that's. That's really hot. It's making me feel I want to put the thermal fuse back on it. Jesus Christ, that is insane. Oh, did I just, <laughs> I didn't swear, absolutely not. Yeah, I, I can't even keep my hand there. Okay, that's it. We are done that. Let's put it in there back in the reverse. We're in the reverse stage. Uh, we have this unit. Okay, this has four screws that sits at the bottom that connects to that. We're not gonna do that. We're just gonna slide it in because getting into a line is, it's not as easy as I want it to be, as we would want it to be. Yeah. Push that down. Hey, yo, I, yeah, uh, oh yeah, I forgot something really important. I'm gonna oil this. Forgot about that, oh man. Yeah. I had to drop a little bit of oil in there. A little oil on that. Yeah. Nobody complains about a little oil, huh, right? Almost forgot. Um, I don't really like this. I want you to see what's happening. So, what doing. so just you gotta get past that wire there. Um, I think I'm gonna wanna wipe that up. Yeah. Lord knows what's gonna happen with that. Sure. 
break this cleaner in there. Get all that stuff. The space gets really hot, so make sure nothing is in here that like flammable. Um, okay. Well, not really hot, but just hot. So we gotta get this in here. We're not breaking anything? That's Sounds sounds doable, right? Yeah, I think so too. What do you think? Nope. Mm hmm, that looks great. down in there. Like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That looks good. And the wires. So nothing's no shorts are happening. Nope. Okay. We have oh yeah, this hot side right here. I'm gonna redo the snake that back through here. That was originally that came through this little. Hmm. Collection. All right. Let's. Uh, we're gonna do that. Similar setup onto here. Just so I can get this wire back through. Okay. Let's, let's, okay, not too too tight. So it just needs to keep the cable into place so it doesn't get cut by the uh, aluminum. Alright. Had like a thousand, a thousand Phillips, and it's hard to figure out which one's what. You know, so the coarse thread long ones were uh, those were. Hmm. <laughs> Alright, one second. I need to look at something. Alright, these are going to be um, uh, the smaller coarse threaded ones. So I'm going to have four left over, so don't worry about it, people. Don't panic, because I'm not screwing in the bottom. I'm sorry, if you didn't see what I'm doing, that's these coarse thread, kind of smaller. And it's, it's, it takes four of these.
Okay. All right. Okay, that's that. We need to place this back on top of that. Wait, no, there's a, there's a panel. This panel goes here. Yeah, that does. All right, one second. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you're probably going to get a little um, blindsided because this is uh, it's going to be hard to do without blinding you. But don't take it personal. Okay. Oops. Oops. oops, oops. Oh, I almost forgot to plug that in. That would be a disaster. Why isn't it working? I just fixed it. like that. Hope I didn't bump it too much. There we go. That up. Oh boy. Let's see what we can do over here. Just gotta elevate this a little bit in front so I can uh, a little bit more room to work with. This is going to be like that. Yeah, great. And we have, um, for this, uh, we have some pretty small screws. These really small Phillips. See that? Yeah. We have two of those. Is that okay so now we get this we don't have two new bulbs for that I did show you that that these bulbs are the ones that belong in there those bulbs are um they're rated uh, uh it's 40 watts at most so don't use anything else you see look see it's all shaken there yeah yeah the filament's broken so blue uh, these are 40 watt bulbs and they are um, e12 bulbs okay so it's gonna take two of them. I don't have two new ones, so we'll move on. Alrighty, holy buggers. Can we get this back on? All right, the uh, bottom part here. Um, okay. That had, um, that has uh, one, two, one, uh, hmm. <laughs> Okay, four on the out. Okay, four on the outside to try to screw this in. All right, I'm gonna my, put some batteries in my headlamps. So, you, know, you can actually see stuff now. Um, well, see more. Hope you're seeing some stuff. I'm not sure if this is gonna work or not, but we'll see what angle works best for you and I. Okay. That's good. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Success. <laughs> Um, so we want to line this up. Now the threads on these are, um, they ended up being like medium in length and, uh, with a little bit of a sharp edge onto it. Kind of look like this. Can you see that? Yeah. Can you see that? Yep. 
Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Let me see. Let me get a better angle. I make sure you can see it. I can see. You can see. We all see. Let's all see together. All right. So they look like this. Cool. And they have a little bevel on the edge. Okay. That's how that goes. Yep, that's how that goes. So let's see what we can do here. That on. Yeah. Alright. So any moments you might not see stuff because. Horrible nature. What I'm trying to do here. What can we do? Locked, I can tell. Okay, so we have two of those on. Yeah. We need those two bottom on. like kind of these are fine thread compared to the other that's not it that looks more like it yeah that's not it um no this was right it just needs to be pushed in Take the weight off of us. Alright, so we have those four. Actually, there's another one here. And another one there. So, okay. So it's six all day. I 
think I remember this. Yeah, I do remember. I wouldn't you recommend using power tools with this because of the plastic. It'll, it'll crack it if you uh, torque it too fast. Some of you might have some the newer power tools where you can kind of like, they're very sensitive. You, know, you, know, you can also set the sensitivity. So when, right when it feels it's getting hard, it'll start to bounce. You know? Okay, so that's the base. I need to get the, uh, the legs on there now. Um, actually, no, there's a plate that goes here. Uh-huh. I remember you. Do you remember me? like that. Right. Okay, they look like those are some coarse threads. They're probably going to be short. Yeah, I think that's what they're going to be. I can see the thread from looking at it. You can't see it. It's too hard to zoom in. But uh, those are definitely coarse threaded and uh, they're going to look like that. Not exactly large or anything. This was a screw that was there earlier, and I had to take that screw off to like remove the uh, plate. But since this is no longer screwed down, um, actually, let me, let me look at this a little bit from back here. Let's see what we're talking about. Yeah, we're good. We are totally fine. Like I said, goes up front. Um, it's going to be a coarse thread, kind of a shorter coarse thread. Four of these. At least they felt like they felt like they're coarse. It's gonna be going in. Um, maybe they're not coarse. Let me try to hand tighten this one. So we got. You know what? Take that off. This is a, a shorter non-coarse thread. It's one of the finer threads. Doesn't seem to go in much easier. Yeah, I don't know. All right, let me uh, think about it for a second. I definitely made a mistake. I forgot to put one more of these. Uh, this is like a finer thread, medium length. And that goes right here. And that holds this base onto the top. And this was hidden under the, uh, you know, remember earlier, it was hidden under the plate. This way I had to remove the plate. Okay, now I figured it out. The plate itself is uh, being held on with these coarse threads. I actually like just hand tighten it down just to get a feel for what's going on. And uh, it's definitely the, uh, And again, uh, if you are, can't imagine what I'm looking at. There are this size, they're coarse threaded and they're like on a shorter side. 
And it would make sense that it would be on the shorter side because uh, if you look at it, you can see that there's not a lot. It doesn't really support anything. It's not structural. The more structural it is, the, uh, you tend to see like a, a much larger fastener. You know? And they're going to uh, make these a little smaller because you know, it saves money. So it is to be expected that it will create different fasteners. I'm gonna put the legs on. Now these legs hook in. Oh, look, I will show you something. They have hooks like that. So we'll hook in like this. And get fastened down. Now, uh, these fasteners were the uh, longer. Longer coarse threaded fasteners. So. Right, yeah, they were definitely the longer coarse threaded ones. That, that's what makes sense from what I'm seeing. So they look like this. I've always been tempted to kind of like uh, speed stuff up sometimes like this part you don't really need to see in real time you know you already know how to pull it apart but part of, one of the reasons why I, tr I try to keep it real time it's because it gives you a feel for how long it's gonna take you to do this project I mean you know you can tell you can tell your significant other hey honey it's gonna take me three hours to do this and then, you know she's like okay Everybody's on the same page. Right? I've done all the work for you. You don't have to solve anything. There's no, how do I rewire this? Where do I buy this part? You know, all that information, I'll give you the information. And then you can just go ahead and build this thing yourself, I'm sure. Well, like, <laughs> I love it. It's just not lining up and I keep screwing. Screwing and missing the hole. It's, it's quite a combo. Lots of euphemisms can be had there. You know, sometimes I had to change your algorithm. You're getting results that you don't want. There's a better, there's a better solution to my problem. That works.
How are we doing? Still recording. All right, hopefully it won't shut off before I get a new battery. You know what? Let's just save us the hassle. All right, I'm gonna get us a new battery. We got two more legs up top to get. Let's get them. Looks like we uh, have a better protocol to get the stuff in, so it should be a lot easier. Ah, oh, this one's broken off. Oh, that's great. Oh, man. The hook part? Yeah, it's totally broken off. I don't remember breaking it. But you the uh, but you the owner did. It wasn't me. I remember when I was pulling it off how like loose it felt. I was like, why does this leg feel so loose compared to the others? Well, it's going to be loose because the hook itself is kind of broken off. So it gets a little bit of like extra movement in that way. Okay, let's do this side. Yeah, this side's the same thing. So I bet you in the front, this thing gets bumped a lot and, uh, by the owner, and then because it gets bumped in the front, it would make sense they're just bumping it and moving around like that. You end up with uh, the situation like we have here where it's like kind of loose. These are long coarse threads, don't forget. If you did forget. If you doubt you did, but just saying it again. Okay, so legs are back on. Legs on. Okay, so this is good to know. So you can see the back gets what's left. Okay. Actually, no, the back legs, I thought this was the front. So the back legs are getting a lot of weird pushing on them. It's causing them to break. All right, we need to get the back on, but to put the bulbs in, he'll just pull them off. On all the quits. Okay. This, this back has There's a lip at the bottom. I just wasn't seeing that. So I'm gonna say that this must be all the little ones. These little tiny screws. So I have a whole lot of them. Trying to see that you can see what I can see, and then I lost my bit. Uh, that light's a little bit annoying. Let me uh, get you a different angle. Okay, so.
I remember when I was a teenager, um, actually no, I was uh, freshly minted, 20, 21 year old. I had this guy named James, and uh, I used to spend a lot of time with him. James was awesome. He, uh, he went to Drexel University, and uh, I'm not really sure what his major was, other than terrorizing me and all his friends with his insane wit. Um, so he did that really well. And um, James would, he was like, he, he didn't understand how secretly he had my admiration, you know, because he would, uh, he was able to fix it. Like everything. This is like, you know, before things are easy to find on the internet, he just was able to fix everything, most things, you know? Of course, there were some limits. I didn't see him do any automotive stuff, but anyway, he fixed things like this. And I was like so, so envious. I was like, oh, I want to be like that, you know? And, um, you know, it was an intention that I set for myself. You know, and here I am, and I feel so, it feels so exciting to just be able to, like, go, when, you know, when something happens, you're not freaking out, you just, like, you just take it for what it is, and you, uh, you understand, like, oh, yeah, I got this, you know, I can fix this. That's one of the nice things of being able to, uh, to repair things yourself. You don't really freak out about anything anymore. And the internet has made it so easy. Because the, just all the hardware that was like once hard to find, you know, like you had to know somebody, to know somebody in that company somewhere, you know, those, those days are gone, man. Like the companies, a lot of these Chinese companies, I don't care. They're like, hey, listen, this is the part that we made. This is the part that we used. You can have it. There's one more screw here. Um, the thread pitch doesn't match the remainder of these. So, uh, I don't see my, you know, I'm not going to damage it. I'm going to leave it as that. Okay, so that's it. We're all together. Let's plug it in. Let's see what happens. What do you think? Think it's going to work? That's a good sign. It's all the way out. You know what I need? I need one of those tools you can point and get the temperature. That would have been a great addition to uh, for this video, so you can see what's going on. I'm going to give you a little lower angle, so you can um, so you can see the heating element in action. This might even be an upgrade, to be honest with you, because the, the heating element that was in there before was uh, much smaller, the original one. Uh, this is a considerably warmer heating element. You know that, uh, you know I'm talking about that thing you point and you get the uh, temperature? I, forgot, I don't know what it's called. But I would really, if someone feels so generous as to send me one, that'd be cool. But other than that, you know what? Just send me love too, that'll work. <laughs> Write me a message. Say, hey, what's up? Tell me that this helped you uh, fix your uh, heater. Now again, this was a hard one because that unit, well, it didn't exist. So we had to do a whole lot more work to get this done. But it's done now. I'm happy. Client's going to be extra, extra hot because this thing is extremely hot. Um, what I would have loved to do that I didn't do on this, um, the this part here, I would have loved to uh, reuse. I'm sorry, let's flip it this way. Uh, I would have loved to take this off and reuse it. Uh, I didn't have enough uh, electrical. Um, 
like little uh, these things. I don't know what they're called. Connectors. Didn't have enough of the right ones to do it properly, so I ended up uh, just abandoning it and just leaving the one that's on it. But this is a thermal fuse. I like these things because they keep things from like catching on fire. Um, you know, when it gets too hot. But hey, listen, if you like this video, I want you to go ahead and subscribe, like, and don't forget to comment. It helps with the algorithms. And also, there's a little tiny um, box next to the subscribe. I'll try to show it to you right around now. Uh, don't, don't forget to click that, okay? It's going to help um, you get the notifications when these things are all done. All right, let's try to turn it off and see what happens. Nice and hot, yeah. Very hot. Whoa. Very, very hot. Love it. So that's off. Can you hear it spinning? Yeah. You would see a whole bunch of light flickering right here. If the bulbs were working. And that's completely off. Lights. Heat. We're good to go. Thanks again for hanging out and uh, hope to see you again. I got a couple really cool dinosaurs to fix. And, uh, you know, it, one of them is a, uh, it's a um, power washer, 3000 PSI power washer, Italian made um, pump that's failed with a Honda engine and it's put together by an American company. Uh, that's probably going to be our next project. All right, we got a lot of projects. So we got a couple scooters coming up too. I'm looking forward to uh, one's a gas one that's in massive disrepair. It's like I don't even know what's happening with this thing. So like someone pulled it apart and never even bothered to put it back together. So that might be more challenging than it's worth. Might be co might cost more money too, but it's worth. But I'm still going to do it. And then also we have a um, an electric scooter. So I'll I'll fix the electric part, get it to run, and then I'm gonna save it for a later project where we convert it to a, a four-stroke engine uh, trimmer um, motor inside of it. Uh, I chose four-stroke because that way I don't have to worry about um, you know getting uh, having a, uh, the oil mixture to go with it. Okay, cool. So thanks again for hanging out. Hope you enjoy the video, and uh, looking forward to the next time. I almost forgot. You know, if you have any trauma you want to talk about, definitely go ahead and post below, because trauma is a real thing. And when it's invisible, it sucks. When you're interacting with someone that has it, and they're unaware that they have trauma, and they are responding in a traumatic way, that really sucks, too. So go ahead. Let's talk about it. Post below. We can have a conversation. All right. Have a good day. Oh, yeah, one more thing. So if you want to know how to just, you know recognize a traumatic response it's usually a disproportionate response to something as in like hmm that feels a little extreme the way you responded to me suggesting that you should be careful because we're making a left turn and there's a car coming you know you ever had that happen something freaks out on you like ah don't i want to drive don't tell me how to drive you're like okay oh cheers all right you got it so that's an example a real simple easy one to unpack um you have any comments about or things you want to share about trauma, let me know. If you see anything I didn't do right in this video, or could have done better, also do that. And again, check out my Amazon wish list. Don't forget to support me. Helps me help you. Okay? Great. And uh, if you see that heat temperature tool and you have it and you want to send it to me or want to buy me one, I'm not opposed to that either. Okay? Have a good day. Thanks. Bye.